What's up, Infected, and welcome to the quarantine. This is going to be a short tutorial video covering the height, movement, and initiative mechanics for the, a game by the name of A Vertigo's South China Sky. Now, the rulebook you see here is a very early prototype of the game. So this is not going to be a full tutorial. This is going to be a small tutorial covering the very unique height, uh, initiative, and movement mechanic that is in the game. For an in-depth rule description of the game, I should have a re full review out covering all of the rules for the game uh, in the coming weeks. So kind of be on the lookout for that. Uh, this is a just a short video covering the u couple of the unique aspects of the game. So let's just head right over to how those systems work. Alright, the first thing I have to mention here is everything you see here is a prototype copy of the game. On top of that, my cat decided to chew on the side of these sails, so teeth marks will not be included. Now the most unique part about this game is most miniature games like this, such as X-Wing and Attack Wing, have an X and a Y axis as you move around the battlefield. However, this game introduces a Z axis to the game that drastically changes the way the ships maneuver. So as you see here, you have a level 1 and a level 2 height, which are very different and are visually represented on the battlefield. So throughout the game, you're going to be building your airships, as you see here, and you have several different speeds, and you have several different heights. Now the speeds are the number of cards that you're going to have to play on your turn per ship, and then the height is directly correlated to your initiative. Now what that means is the ships that are have the higher initiative, they're going to move last, so they'll be able to react to the slower ships but the higher initiative is also going to be able to perform actions first because they have the high ground that would make Anakin Skywalker blush. Now those movement cards that I mentioned earlier. So throughout the course of the game, you, each one of your ships will have to move a certain number. And when you move, you have to play these cards as movement. So how it would work is if I have a movement of one, I would play one of these cards in front of my ship. Now there's several types of cards. You have two cards that look like they have the bow of a ship on them, and those one of these two cards must be the first card that you lay down. Now you're going to line the gold triangle up to the front of your ship. And you're able to place this in one of the three locations that you see here to be able to start off which direction you're going to move. Now let's take a look at what a card looks like. So, as I've already mentioned, you have the bow of a ship, showing that this it has to be a starter card. Now, a card like this can also be played as a non-starter card. So, I can play this purple and then play this blue later. Even though it has the bow of a ship, it just shows that one of these two must be a starter. But, when we look at one of these cards, you see a, some cards may have a red line that comes out of it, showing that this card must go straight, which I'll explain later. You have your turn radius, that's up here, that's the lighter colored part above here. You have your alignment dot, and then you have any special abilities this card may grant. Some cards may also include two small triangles down here at the bottom that allow you to see when you're about to pass over these lines. So what do I mean by that? Well, if my speed were two, then maybe I would play this card here, and then I have to play a second card. So, maybe I play this red card, but I want to turn. So, I can't turn with, say, this purple card because it has a red line on it. This must be played straight out. But, I can turn with this. Even though the blue card has a red line on it, that's not the card that's turning. This is. So, I can place this and line these dots up, and I'm allowed to have this card go in any one of these directions as long as these red triangles do not pass over the white line that you see here. So for example, this would be a valid placement because this red triangle does not pass over the line that you see here. But let's say I really want to turn back this way again, maybe to avoid a collision or maybe to try to get into a better tactical position. Both of these cards cannot be played as a turn because they have a red line on them. So you can flip any card in the game over and you get a generic blue card, which then I could play, if my movement were three, I could play this this way, which would allow me to pick up my ship from here 
and place it at the end of my card row. Then, after you've moved, you're going to look at any of the text you see on the card. This being a generic card, it will never have any text. But this says that I get plus 2 AP, and this says my ship were to gain 3 hit points. Now, there are two special cards in the game. You have gold cards that when you play them, they never contribute to your movement speed. So playing this does not count as the, one of the mandatory cards that you must play during your turn. Likewise, purple cards, there can only ever be one purple card played throughout your movement phase. Now, there are a few special maneuvers that you can perform during your movement phase. So let's say, hypothetically, I have a movement of two. What I could do is you could play, I could play one card, so you're going to play one card less than your actual movement amount is. But, you would increase your height of your ship by one level. By doing so, it would also increase your initiative for the action round. This action would be called a climb. So because I played one card and increased one level, that would count as my two movement. So I would move my ship to the end of the card, do any special things that are on here, and that would complete this ship's movement. Now, if a ship is at either height two or three, you can perform what's called a swoop. So you could play, if my movement speed were to be one, I could play my one card. Then I could decide to drop one level and then add two cards to that movement, allowing me to effectively drop from one height and use gravity and the forward momentum of my ship to propel myself forward at a faster rate, maybe to get myself into a better tactical position. And the last special maneuver is called a dive. If my speed were to be 1, as we said earlier, and my ship's altitude is at level 3, I can reduce my height all the way back down to level 1 and instead increase my speed by 3, allowing me to effectively drop as far across the battlefield as I would like using the forward, forward momentum and gravity of my ship to propel me into, hopefully, a really good tactical position. And that is how the height, initiative, and movement system works for a Vertigos. Now as you see there, you have a tactical advantage to being higher because you move last but act first, allowing all of the slower ships to get into a position and you being able to take advantage of said position. It has a couple very unique systems to it, so again, be on the lookout for that full tutorial. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time in the quarantine.